So fascist Jerry Seinfeld is getting more and more open in his calls for violence and his calls for mistreatment of the mentally ill. And so I'll link you to the video that I'm referring to, but he covers two topics. The first one being that there is some trans TikToker that is advocating for um, doctors to break the law and uh, other illegal activities occur to trans underage children now that these new restrictions have been put in place. Now, to his followers, before you grab a rope, believe it or not, I'm, I actually agree that transitioning children, transitioning minors is wrong. Uh, and most people will, when I say that, they will come at me with a bunch of, oh, well, you've just been watching too much Matt Walsh. No, I was concerned about this issue before I knew who Matt Walsh was. And my concern comes from seeing the effects, the effects of these barbaric practices with my own two eyes in my own life and many times over, not just one isolated incident. I've seen the actual explosion of this crazy shit happening face to face to people I care about and the children of people I care about. That's why I don't agree with it. I think that it's the, I think that it is basically the new, there are always these miracle cures that come along and his, that history remembers as being horribly barbaric, the lobotomy being a great example. And I think this is just the new lobotomy. Anyway, that all of that aside, I don't agree with the person that's calling for, uh, the uh, calling for doctors to break the law, but Michael Knowles uh, does this, this thing where first he says that people are correct, would be correct to want this person to be run out of town on a rail and would want, uh, or to lock, be locked up in a mental institution. And that's not even the most, the worst of what I'm getting to from this one video. But just in that, he already, and of course, as is always the case, whenever he starts talking about harming other people, he brims with uh, glee, he becomes, he smiles, he brims with glee. Suddenly there is light in his eyes and there is only ever light in his eyes when he's talking about harming people. So as is always the case, uh, you know, his, his usual, he, he gives himself away. He has no poker face when it comes to his, um, the kind of sadistic glee that he take, he has at the thought of harming people. But that was not even the most concerning thing. In the same clip, he talks about a recently unfolding situation, uh, involving a man named Jordan Neely. Uh, Mr. Neely was a severely mentally ill homeless man who uh, was recently uh, strangled to death in a chokehold on the New York City subway because he was yelling at the other path. He was yelling at passengers in a very deranged state and uh, was saying that he, uh, he did say things about being ready to commit murder, but it was, from what I've been able to gather, uh, mostly in the course of incoherent babble, but he more importantly said that he was very hungry and very afraid. And it sounds, it, it sounds to me like the, in, in absence of him specifically threatening anyone or harming anyone, it sounds like this is, um, uh, this was a, somebody who was, uh, again, mentally ill and very hungry and not in their right frame of mind. There's a man uh, whose name I'm not going to repeat uh, because it's not worth repeating, who uh, tackled him, held him to the ground in a chokehold, which ultimately ended his life. Michael Knowles does not just argue that this man is in the right for doing that. He argues that this man is some kind of hero that should be given the key to the city, and he is just, again, brimming with joy that this uh, horrible action occurred, and refers to Neely as a career criminal. And it's really disgusting because this always comes up. Whenever one of these vigilante, um, one of these vigilante killings, which by the way, I read one of the articles I was reading on this said that vigilante is not the right term because a vigilante by definition is somebody that is uh, acting as part of a uh, militia group, an organized militia group, or on behalf of a militia group. Um, just because 
this man does not fit the term vigilante in the most technical term does not mean that he is not falling under the legal auspices of vigilanteism. That would be almost like saying that, uh, that, that would be almost like trying to argue that someone didn't commit rape on the grounds that women are no longer the property of their uh, property of their fathers and it was original in, in the olden days it was originally a property crime. Um, that it's anyway, but that's beside the point. He acted in a vigilante ma manner, acted as a vigilante. And so what, uh, the, you know, what we come back to, we keep coming back to this thing over and over again, when we find ourselves in these vigilante situations, Trayvon Martin, Ahmaud Arbery, now this, what do they do? Oh, what does conservative media do over and over again? What do they always do? They say, they go to the, the history, they, they dig up criminal history, ne'er-do-well behavior from these guys and try to argue that because these, you know, go, because these guys had this history, the people who killed them somehow were acting in some kind of noble endeavor or something like that. Uh, and yes, one, uh, one of Neely's, Neely was no saint. One of his actions involved hitting a 67-year-old uh, woman and giving her a black eye. Uh, or I believe it was 67, but definitely an elderly woman and giving her a black eye. He was no saint. But here's the thing. None of that comes into play with regards to what he was doing in that, on that subway in that moment and whether or not the guy that killed him was right to kill him. Over and over again, we, we keep seeing this. Look at what happened with Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman. Every when when the Trayvon Martin thing happened, what did they do? What was the freak out? Uh, what was the the right wing freak out response to that? They started pointing to all of these previous uh, ne'er do well things that uh, Trayvon Martin had done and admittedly had done. They start pointing to all of that. And they start trying to use that to justify George Zimmerman killing him, even though George Zimmerman had no knowledge of any of that when he killed him. Now, you can point out, of course, that George Zimmerman had a history of, a history of violent outbursts, one involving the assault of a police officer, and was ordered to court, uh, take, uh, had to take court-ordered anger management classes. You try to point that shit out, none of that factors. None of that's ever considered. We never talk about that. We can only talk about the... Suppose the uh, criminal background of the person that was killed to justify killing the uh, justify a killing that was done with no regards to no regard to any of that criminal background. Saw the same thing with Ahmad Arbery. The same thing we're seeing it now. Also, the fact that this person was a uh, the person that killed him. Uh, had a background with the U.S. military does not make him some kind of saintly person. Knowles, uh, you know, Knowles carries on that or begins on that uh, position. He begins on how horrible it is that a military veteran can't protect them, uh, can't protect good people from a career criminal. That's literally, you know, watch the video. That's literally how he couches the terminology for his description of the events. Look, being a military veteran does not turn you into a saint. You, uh, it be, uh, military veterans can still do heinous, horrible things to innocent people. Hint, hint, Timothy McVeigh. Hint, hint, Lee R.V. Oswald. But what is so despicable is the way in which Michael Knowles more increasingly, increasingly and nakedly begins advocating for the use of violence against the mentally ill. And that's what we see if you listen to his description here. He, uh, he, advoca uh, he continually advocates the use of force against the mentally ill. And as an advocate for the mentally ill, that really bothers me and really gets under my skin. But what's even more galling about that is that everything Michael Moles does, he justifies as being appropriate Christian behavior. And as a Christian, that disgusts me. As a Christian, that makes me sick. In Michael Knowles, Michael Knowles thinks that it's Christian for the strong to subjugate the weak. Michael Knowles thinks that it's Christian for people to be uh, beaten, for people to be beaten down instead of being helped. Michael Knowles thinks that it's Christian to laugh at the suffering of other people. 
over and over again. That is the person that he is, a person without kindness, a person without compassion, a person without heart, a person without sympathy for others. Oh, but he's pro-life. That's right. That's right. His one trump card. He can play the one trump card that he's not a baby killer, ergo, he must ergo everything else he does must be done with some must be uh, born out of some saintly conviction. That's called virtue signaling, folks. And it applies as much to the right as it does to the left. But that's really what's so sickening. If Michael Knowles was alive in the time of Christ, he would not be a Christian. He would be a Roman soldier. And this man and his increasing his his increasing bloodlust and his increasing calls for violent uh, violent vigilantism towards the mentally ill continue unabated. Now, to be very clear, I am expressing my anger and frustration. I am not in any way, shape, or form advocating violence. I want to make that very clear. I am advocating for Michael Knowles to be called out for the creep that he is and for the vile person that he is. And I know that I ch I know that I take my own Christian convictions into uh, uh, call my own Christian convictions into question when I speak about another person with that strong vitriolic language. But for what it's worth, what I would really like to see is this man learn to have a heart. I don't know if he can. I don't know if he can have a heart towards other people. I saw him speak recently on video, I was not there, but I saw the video of him speaking recently at a town where I was, uh, where I lived growing up and where I was subjected to a level of bigoted bullying and harassment and mistreatment that has left me with post-traumatic stress disorder to this very day. And I saw that man gleefully dog-whistling vigilante action towards the young men in the audience that looked like clones of the people who did that to me. This, what this, he's going, this idea that he does not, that he has gotten into his head, that he does not have to share the planet with any other human being, that he can legislate away the, uh, the rights of any person he disagrees with, that he can lock up any person he disagrees with as a, uh, as some kind of, uh, Ment, uh, some kind of uh, mental health danger or something like that, that he can use mental health treatment as a weapon against people is beyond despicable. And he needs to be called out and he needs to be challenged. And he needs to be challenged on no uncertain terms that violence and vigilante bullying of weak people is what he is after and what he calls for gleefully and joyously. Listen to the man. Listen to how much joy fills his voice when he talks about harming other people, especially the weak, especially the, especially the mentally ill. I am neither the most liberal or most conservative person you would ever meet. I have beliefs all across the board and all across the spectrum. But I know a bully when I see one. I know an authoritarian when I see one. And I know a gleeful little lunatic with severe small man's disease when I see one. And this idea, on and on, he continues advocating this idea that good, proper, decent people anyone that he judges to be a good, proper, decent person, has this right and this responsibility to police the behavior of people he appraises to be degenerates, up to and including the use of lethal force. Let me tell you something, Mikey. You know, I as a policy try not to lecture people on what good Christian behavior is, because um, I think that you know, good Christian behavior is something that we are called to um, observe within ourselves and think about within ourselves, not police other people with. But I'll tell you this, Mikey. The Christian response 
to a mentally ill man who says he's severely hungry and is at the worst thing he's been uh the worst thing he has been accused of doing as of the recording of this video the worst thing that Jordan Elia was accused of doing was speaking in an aggressive manner that was making people uncomfortable when somebody's doing that and they're ranting about how hungry you are you know what yes it is christian behavior to stand up and try to separate that person from the other people. But you know how you do it? You come up to him, you say, hey man, hey, I hear that you're hungry. Let me get you some food. I hear that you're hungry. I'm gonna get you some food, I'll get you a bite to eat. See what I can do to help you, buddy. And you don't let that person harm you. If they start attacking you, yes, you use self-defense, but you only use enough self-defense to desist the situation. And that's what's going to have to be argued in court. It, uh, well, I don't think this was not a self-defense situation, but it's going to, they're going to have to argue in court that not only were his actions justifiable, but that his act, it was justifiable for him to maintain a chokehold for 15 minutes. And by the way, by the way, the fact that he has military training is a big strike against him because he's supposed to know how to use those, th those tactics effectively uh, and responsibly, I should say. That's what you do. You say, hey, let me get you some food. We're going to get you some food. It's going to be all right, okay? Let me help you out here. What stop do you get off at? I'm on my way to such and such. Can you sit with me until Can you sit with me until the next exit? We'll get off, get you some food, and we'll pray together, okay? That's the Christian response. Tackling a man who said that he is scared and hungry. First and foremost, that he is scared and hungry. And that he's, and made it clear that he's having a mental health crisis. Tackling him and choking him to death is not heroic, and it's not Christian behavior. The lions are supposed to lie down with the lambs, Michael, not eat them. Now, I'll tell you something. I spent a long time, uh, many, too many, far too many years of my life as an atheist. Far too many. And it was because I was bullied out of the Christian world by people like you, Michael. People who think that they're, they are morally sanctified in their bullying. I get comments from Michael Knowles fans, and not one of them has ever been a polite, decent person respectfully disagreeing with me. Every one of them has been a loud, braggadocious bully that wants to throw down and fight. And it's understandable why. Because this man is rallying an army of bullies, and increasingly he is calling for them to do violence against others. And he's put and to do vigilante violence against others. Not directly. He hasn't directly ordered anybody to go out and specifically, he has not specifically said this person go harm that person. No, he's never done that. But he sure advocates the hell out of vigilante violence. He sure advocates the hell out of, he sure is the first trained SEAL to get up there and applaud as loudly as he can every time somebody bullies another person into submission. That is the person you are championing. And if you have any moral righteousness within you at all, if you have any compassion, any heart, and if you have a soul, you will abandon this man and his heinous, despicable worldview.